last week, Reverend Dr. Alan Buck was here, and he divulged that he was just a bit competitive at times as he worried about winning. And I would say that Alan is in very good company as we read this passage by Paul that just sounds a wee bit competitive at the beginning anyway. So let us listen to Paul's talk about winning and comp competition and what it is we're actually striving for. And Paul says, if anyone else has reason to be confident in the flesh, I have more. I was circumcised on the eighth day, a member of the people of Israel of the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew born of Hebrews, as to the law, a Pharisee. As to zeal, I was a persecutor of the church. As to righteousness under the law, blameless. Yet, whatever gains I had, these I have come to regard as loss because of Christ. More than that, I regard everything as loss because of the surpassing value of knowing Christ. For his sake, I have suffered the loss of all things, and I regard them as rubbish. And that is a very delicate word for what he actually said if you look at the scriptures. I regard them as rubbish in order that I may gain Christ. I want to know Christ. Not that I already have obtained this or have already reached the goal, but I press on to make it my own because Christ Jesus has made me his own. Beloved, I do not consider that I have made it my own, but this one thing I do, forgetting what lies behind and straining forward to what lies ahead, I press on toward the goal for the prize of the heavenly call of God in Christ Jesus. This is the word of God for the people of God. Please be seated. Paul had a lot to be proud of in his tradition. He had done all the things right. And he was still proud of being a Pharisee because that meant he kept the law rigorously. He said, I have kept the law perfectly. Now there's a man who's a little bit vain. But he said, all of that, all of that, that I thought was success, I thought that was the goal, to live a blameless life, to follow the law exactly, and to make sure that everybody else followed it exactly as I thought too, because that was my job as a zealot, as a Pharisee, to go out and kill those who weren't doing it my way. And that made me even better. All those things, however, that I thought were the goal of my life are rubbish. And the word that he uses there is actually the word that, um, that which we leave in the outhouse. That was the word that he used. That was, that word was in the Bible. But King James and those, let's just call it rubbish. He said how worthless. All that was that which the body can't even use. That's how little of value that is. Because Christ claimed me. I now know that the goal wasn't following the letter of the law, but living the law. When he says knowing Christ, it has nothing to do with, hi Christ, how are you? Nice to meet you. It's not just getting to know him. 
It's not pouring over the scriptures that didn't exist in his time, but pouring over the word, pouring over the Old Testament, the Torah, finding out everything he could. It had nothing to do with that either. Knowing Christ, knowing Christ in this context actually meant participating with, in Christ. Participating in Christ. So it has nothing to do with knowing, nothing to do with feeling. I love Jesus. It had nothing to do with saying, Jesus Christ is my Lord and Savior, and I am saved. It had nothing to do with telling everybody else how to act and pointing out their flaws. It had nothing to do with standing up there and saying, I was a sinner and now I'm saved and you can too. It had to do with participating in Christ which is participating in God, which is doing the work of God. And he says it, I press on toward the goal for the prize of God's heavenly call. The prize, the goal is doing God's heavenly call. That is is the goal. Nothing else is. Everything else is useless. All Paul wants is to do the living work of the living God. Be the hands and feet of him who loves us. That's the goal. I was in a meeting this week with all clergy persons, and instead of the doing the tell us where you're at and how many years, which always turns out to, well, I've been in ministry 10 years, well, I've been in ministry 20 years, I've been in ministry since you were born. Okay, so that's always competitive, right? And I'm at, you know, I'm just at this church, well, oh, I'm at this church. So, oh, so that's not what the director said. Director said, the facilitator of the meeting said, let's go around and share a moment where we saw God this week. Okay, you know what clergy can do with that. Oh, I saw God in the my dog this morning when I got up. It was so happy. I saw God in my grandchildren. They ran toward me across the soccer field. Well, I saw God in the face of the person I baptized last week. Well, I saw God in the face of two people I baptized last week. Well, I saw God. And, it, it, you know, as it went around the table, you know, competition. Obviously, the more we do, the more we know God. Paul says, that's rubbish. Glad you saw God. Glad you got the dog. Glad you got the grandkids. Glad you were baptizing people. That's all good. What are we doing? What is our goal? What is our goal? The actual discussion that we were having is how to keep United Methodist Church together. How can we bridge this gap that seems growing and growing among us? And there were people on different sides of that divide at that meeting. And you know what happened? Some of the clergy men, and sorry it was men, started saying, well, in the Nicene Council, blah, 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 and they talked about division, and that was the first, well, back in Paul's day, the Jerusalem Council, well, I need to beg to differ with you. It wasn't there, and then it's like, can we, no, they started pontificating about how much they knew about church history and the different divisions and blah, blah, blah. And finally, someone did say, is our goal really unity? Should that be our goal? Is that what it's about? Unity at all costs? And that did stop me for a moment. 
because I'm not sure about unity at all costs. Yet of one thing I am certain, that the body of Christ is not to be divided. Amen. The body of Christ is to be brought back together and we've divided it enough, I think, at that moment. Paul says, what is the goal? The goal is to do the work of Christ. It's not necessarily unity or division, but it's to do the work of Christ who sent us. What are we doing at Epworth? What are we doing? And I have to say, I stop and think about that and I cry. On the way in this morning, I thought, how many more Sundays do I get to drive here? Why don't we just stop it? Not just stay. We're doing okay. We're doing okay. We're doing the work of God. What's, what's our goal? Why are we doing this? And in the midst of my tears, I say, well, what is the goal? Is the goal for us to have more members? Because if we, if we blend with these other churches, we'll have more members, we'll have more money, is that what it's about? We'll have a better building because it really couldn't get worse. <laughs> but I do love this building <clears throat> and I love this room. And it's sacred. And all those who visited here and both those pastors who visited here said, there is something there that is different. Our people are friendly, but there are some, there's something in that space. What I say is in the space, is a community that knows the goal. I don't think it's the space. I think the people from the past and the present and even the glimmer of those in the future that are part of this community that know the goal that bring that spirit here and make it a living body of Christ. And that is our goal. It is to be the living body of Christ. It is to participate in Christ. And my spirit, when it connects with God, I believe is telling me that the goal is three strands braided together are so much stronger than one by itself. And more can be done towards participating in Christ if we go for it together. That is what I think, and that is what I believe most of the time. I don't know that that is the direction we will take. But I do know that if we keep the goal in front of us always, the goal of individually, Knowing Christ, participating in Christ in every dimension of our lives. Not just in here, and not just down in the fellowship hall, and not just when we're on a mission, but in every dimension of Christ. If I say, is this, of our lives, is this what I'm doing? Participating in Christ? Is this bringing the kingdom closer or further? And if we, and as a church, as a faith community, ask ourselves at every step of the way, is this bringing the kingdom of God closer or is it driving it farther away? If we look at that honestly and answer it from our hearts connected to the spirit, we cannot go wrong. We will make it to the goal, which is the transformation of the world and bringing the kingdom to reality. Beloved, as you go in prayer, ask God to show you clearly the goal and ask the Spirit to help you see how to get there. Let us pray.